utilised in a select group of patients, generally young children and those with poor VA in one eye. Okay, so how do we go about utilising the Krimsky to measure deviations? With the Krimsky, what we do is we look at the corner reflection of the patient and we utilise prisms to centralise that corner reflection. So if we take a look at the patient here to the right, we can see that they have a right esotropia and that the corner reflection is sitting here on the margin of the pupil. Now what we want to do is utilise prisms to bring that corner reflection back into the correct position, which is slightly, uh, slightly nasal from the centre. Originally, the Krimsky was performed with the prism in front of the deviating eye. However, more commonly now, we perform the Krimsky with the prism in front of the sound eye or the fixing eye. So I'll take you through both and I'll start off by talking to you about putting the prism in front of the deviating eye and then we'll talk about that more common procedure of putting it in front of the fixing eye. So as we see here in the photograph, we have a patient who has a displaced corner reflection temporally and has an esotropia. And as we have said earlier in the previous video, for an esotropia, we need a base out prism. So simply put, we will put a prism in front of that right eye and begin to try and centralise that reflex. Now, the first thing you need to do is perform the Hirschberg and estimate the size of the deviation. So let's say we estimate that it's around 15 degrees. So what I would do is take a single prism, that is 30 prism doctors, and I choose 30 because um, in prism doctors is double of the degrees. So for 15 degrees, it equates to uh, 30 prism doctors. You can also use a prism bar. It's up to you whether you use a prism bar or a uh, single prism. But I tend to find that because I'm using it often in younger children, um, single prisms tend to be more tolerated uh, by, by young children and infants. But in any case, you would start off with the prism that you've estimated is the size of the deviation. So you put it in front of the right eye, you'd start off with that 30, and then you would raise it and lower it depending on whether you feel you've moved it into the correct position. And with that base out prism, what you're doing is moving that image towards the fovea. And when that, um, when you found the prism that brings that image to the fovea, the corner reflection should be centralized or slightly nasal as we expect for the normal position. So say that it took us the 35 prism doctor, or it took us 35 prism doctors to centralise or put that corner reflection into the correct position, then that is the size of the deviation. And it's simple as that. We use the prisms to put the corner reflection in the deviating eye into the correct position. So what are we doing with the modified Krimsky where we're putting the prism in front of the fixing eye? Let's take a look at this example. Here we see a patient has a right esotropia and the left eye is a fixing eye. And as I said, we pop the prism in front of the fixing eye. And what we can see is that when you put the prism in front of the fixing eye, the corner reflection in the sound eye sorry, in the deviating eye, I should say, will begin to move and begin to centralise. And we can see that it was here on the margin of the iris with no prism, and now with the base out prism, it's getting closer to the pupil. And then the orthoptist has found the correct prism to bring it into the centralised position or slightly nasal where we're expecting it. And what we're really expecting is that the position of the um, corner reflection in the deviating eye should be the position of the left eye before you began testing, okay? So when you begin your testing, see where 
the corner reflection of the fixing eye is, and then you're trying to simulate that in the other eye. Okay, how are we achieving this? Well, when we put a base out prism, as you know, the light will bend towards the base, and here we can see that the base has um, allowed the light to bend or deviate towards the base. Now, because this is the fixing eye, the eye will rotate in so that this fovea here can now fix back onto the target. Now, in that left eye turning in to take up fixation, we know the eyes need to move together. The right eye will move out. It will make a conjugate movement out. And so what we see here is that the eye is in, and when the prism comes on, the eye will move out. And progressively, as you increase these prisms, what will happen is the eye will progressively move out. That deviating eye will move out, 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 until you're satisfied that the corner reflection is in the correct position. And one of the advantages of this test, or the modified Kumsky, is that we allow ourselves to have a clear view of the deviating eye. In the previous example, we had the prism in front of the deviating eye, so in order to correct the corner reflection, you've got to actually look at or look through the prism. And that can be distorting sometimes. And in this particular instance, where we've put it in front of the fixing eye, the deviating eye is in clear view or can clearly be seen and therefore it's a little bit easier to perform and I always perform it in front of the fixing eye. Now I've just put this image here to just show you that little bit more clearly as to what to expect to see when you put the prism in front of the fixing eye. So here in image A we have the patient fixing with the right eye and they've got an LET. The prism has gone in front of the right eye and the dotted line represents the original position of the right eye. And what we can see here is this was the fixing eye, and as it tries to continue to fix on the target with the base out prism, it will start to deviate inwards. And in going inwards, this eye will begin, or the left eye, will make conjugate movements outwards. So here's the original position of the left eye, where it was in, and those conjugate movements to move with the right eye, will result in you centralising that corneal reflex. And finally, in terms of recording, we just simply write Krimsky and we indicate the size of the prism that uh, resulted in us centralising or putting that uh, corneal reflection in the correct position. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.